We're gonna do a quick video on sharpening a grafting knife. So first of all, what is sharpness? Two things coming together to form an edge. If these two sides, like the two bevels, say on a knife, this is a double beveled knife, so it has a bevel here and a bevel here. If those don't come together, then there's a flat spot on top and then it's not sharp. We have to bring those together. So that's the first thing, two sides coming together. Another factor is that this, the angle formed between these two bevels could be anything from this to this, right? So this is, you know, intuitively gonna be sharper than this is. And finally, how fine is this ground and polished? So if I'm sharpening away on this 250 grit, which is really coarse, it's great for grinding, and I finish all my, you know, sharpening, quote unquote, and then go to use this, it's not gonna be very sharp because it's gonna be all scratch. It's gonna have big coarse scratches and those are gonna go all the way to the edge where the, where the two meet. As a result, you'll have a coarse scratchy edge. Now, if we flip this over to the 1000 side and then do it on the 4000 side, we're gonna end up with a polished surface and that's gonna be much sharper. So sharpening progresses through several steps. One is to, you know, well obviously you want to decide what the bevel is. Most knives will have that established already. And then you want to grind it into shape and get these two uh, sides to meet at the center. And then it's a matter of polishing these down. So you start on one grit, then you go to the next grit and you just keep polishing until the edge is very polished and then a little bit of finishing and it's done. Here's what goes wrong with this process. I think this is a really useful way to look at it. One is you pick the wrong angle. So let's say I'm sharpening this and I tip it way up like that. That's too high. And it's gonna end up with an almost like, you know, like a really steep, like 35, 40 degrees. Or I'm gonna go way too low and then I'm gonna end up with a super sharp but very fragile edge. Something that would be good for shaving but not for cutting wood or grafting. Once you pick the right bevel, which I'm not gonna tell you because I actually don't know. I do all that by feel. Um, you have to maintain it at that same angle. So what most people will do in the beginning is as they're grinding the knife, they're tipping it like this, you know, like maybe like that kind of, I'm, exa I'm exaggerating obviously. And then the bevel isn't flat. Another thing people don't do is they don't grind enough on the first grit to get those edges to meet all the way along the edge. That's critical. Everything you do afterwards is wasted if you don't get that one thing right. You can use double beveled knives for grafting. This is sharpened on both sides, as most knives are. But grafting knives have a single bevel, so it's completely flat on one side and it's beveled on the other side. That basically just allows for a little bit more control. Uh, it's very nice, but it's not necessary. When you're sharpening a single beveled tool like a grafting knife, you wanna keep this side perfectly flat. So if it's already in really good shape and polished like this is, I'm not gonna mess with that at all except to polish it a little at the very end of sharpening. If it's not, then hold it perfectly flat if you can on a flat stone. If your stone's not flat, go flat and find a piece of really flat concrete, rub it against another sharpening stone, whatever you need to do until it's really flat. Like this has a dip right here, but I know it's flat all in this area. Grind that until you can see that it's flat across and it doesn't have to be flat everywhere, but it has to be flat all the way along the edge. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a kind of a hollow in the center and then it's sharp right on the edge there and on this side or polished rather. But once you go through all the grits and get this polished, you don't ever have to mess with it that much again. You know, just um, polish it at the end of sharpening, which we'll get to. So there are many ways to go about making the grind. You know, obviously, again, you have to keep the grind consistent and you have to choose the right bevel angle. But once you do that, there's lots of different ways to keep it. If someone tries to tell you, you know, the proper way to do this, um, just laugh at them. I like this method a lot. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just skimming on the front stroke and then as I pull back, I'm applying pressure and I have my fingers right up here on the edge pressing down, which makes it cut much faster. This is a very efficient, very controlled method. I learned it on a YouTube channel. Um, I'll try to link that in the description of the video. Okay. Now already, since this was pretty sharp, I can feel that there's a burr here. What I mean is that since I was grinding this side, it got really thin on the edge and a little bit of metal curled under 
and pokes up like this, like a little curl like that. And I can feel that with my finger. And I'm feeling all the way along. If you don't feel it, like sometimes the skin on your fingers will be more or less sensitive because of their condition. Take your thumbnail and scratch that way and make sure you can feel that all the way along. So already I'm done with that. Now I'm gonna go to 1000, that was 250. I'm gonna do the same thing. It doesn't take long in these Japanese stones, they cut super fast. Just one more time for good measure. Now what I'm doing is I'm just removing the scratches from the previous grip. Okay, so we're done with 1,000, now we're going to 4,000. Also, as I get into the finer grits, I'm gonna lighten up just a little bit on my stroke. And it may take longer with each successive grit because the fine grits cut just a little bit slower. It, it really depends, that's not a solid rule. If you use the same stones all the time, you'll kind of get a feel. Now, when you're on this fine grit, you may see that little curl of metal that formed called the burr. You may see it break off like a little fine wire on here. That's good. You don't want it. So, Okay, so now I've polished this and I'm going to go put my knife flat. And I'm going to rub it back and forth um, this way. Not necessary for sure. You could you could do it this way too. But I kind of like to do it like that. And then I'm going to switch back and forth a few times. Notice how controlled this is, and I'm maintaining the same angle all the way through. Okay, so right at the end, I'm just gonna go back and forth a few times. And with this stone, that fine stone, that should have gotten rid of pretty much all of this wire edge, but we're gonna strop too. The terms of stropping are a little bit confusing because sometimes people are polishing with a compound while they're stropping, and sometimes it's just like, say, plain leather or a piece of wood or something like that. I can't prove what's happening when you strop on a plain piece of, of like leather or something, but I think for the most part, it's bending back and forth the wire edge, which I can see there's a little bit left right here. There it is right on my finger. And until it kind of breaks off and then polishing and refining the edge a little bit. If you use a polishing compound, it's more like going to a super, super fine whetstone, except that since this is soft, even if you kind of drag it pretty flat, it's still kind of cupping up under the edge. So it's probably rounding the edge off very slightly, which could make the edge stronger and more durable. And obviously it's gonna polish it more. So this side has a polishing compound. Now, if you don't have a strop, um, you can make one from an old belt or just use an old belt, like a section of old belt tied to a doorknob or something like that. And I'm gonna hold this at the angle I sharpened at and then just drag it backwards like that. You can also use wood, like this piece of wood is perfect because it's old and crusty and probably has a little bit of dirt embedded in it. I've used wood a lot, just, you know, whatever random chunk of wood is laying out somewhere. If it's uh, kind of weathered, might be impregnated with dust, they'll probably just work that much better. And if you have metal polishing compound of some kind, you can rub that into the leather for stropping. Okay, so that's it. This thing is razor sharp now. I could have gone to 6,000 grit stone, this one here, and got it even more polished and a little bit sharper. 
4,000 is adequate, uh, 6,000 is nice. Okay, so as far as tools go, if you have already have sharpening stones around, give them a try. Uh, the proof's in the pudding. You know, they either work or they don't. If you can shave with it when you're done, then it's good enough. The reason I like these Japanese water stones, and these are all King brand, which is like the affordable budget brand, is that they cut fast and even the fine grits, like the polishing grits, like the 4,000 and the 6,000 still cut really fast. So it just saves a lot of time in sharpening. I really like this one. It's a 250, 1000, and you can cut the end off and make an ax sharpening puck with it and uh, still have a nice six inch stone left over. It's usually under 20 bucks, which is just amazing to me. And you'll need an addition to that uh, 250, 1000. You're gonna need something finer to do polishing. So either a 4000 or a 6000 should do. If I had a choice, I'd probably go with the 6000. But 4,000 is enough of a polish to get things razor sharp if you strop, especially. So this one is uh, 6,000, 1,000. Unfortunately, they don't make a 6,000, 4,000, which would be the perfect complement stone to this. I think this one is maybe around 30 bucks or so. The, the prices vary all the time on Amazon, so you can check there. And this, I don't know. You, you could also get like a single 4,000 or a single 6,000. But just those three, the 250, 1000, and 4000 or 6000 should do everything you need to do if you have a file and a strop. And again, just make your strop out of any old piece of belt or something like that. So that's actually really most of what you need to know about sharpening. It takes a lot of practice and time to learn to maintain a flat, consistent bevel and not rock the knife. And that just takes time and practice. There's really no substitute for that. And just remember those other rules. So first of all, you have to bring the edges together with your coarse grit all the way until the bevels form an edge at the, all the way along the edge. Cause all you're doing after that is polishing, you know, and refining, you're not really grinding it anymore. So think of the first grit as grinding, get that edge established all the way along, check it for the burr and then start polishing. Remove all the scratches from the previous grit before moving on to the next grit. Make sure that the bevel stays flat and you're not rocking it. And make sure when you're done that you strop enough to get rid of all of the wire edge. And uh, that's really all you need to know.